All right, what is going on, Chiefs Kingdom? Welcome back to another KC Sports Report live stream. I'm your host, Michael Darcy, and today I'm joined by Josh Fan. And this is a uh, Chiefs Eagles post game show. The Chiefs beat the Eagles in Philadelphia by a final score of 42 to 30. But uh, that does not have me feeling the most confident. But uh, Josh, um, why don't we get your thoughts first? How are you feeling after this uh, Chiefs win? Um, I mean, kind of like how you just said, I'm pretty disappointed, to be honest. Like, I know the score, especially with that garbage time TD, makes this game look a lot closer. Or, I'm sorry, a lot – um not closer, a lot further apart than it really was. This was a football game all the way up until what five or six minutes left in the fourth quarter. This, we said, what did we say uh, this past week on our show, Michael? If this is a game where the Chiefs and the Eagles are still in a dogfight late in the fourth quarter, I mean, there's reason, there's red flags. I mean, that's a red flag. And that's exactly what it was today. Um, this defense is god awful. This was against an Eagles team that was one of the five worst teams in the NFL heading into this game, and we made them look like they belonged on the field with us. Yeah, and honestly, I think the biggest problem with with it in my eyes is that the Chiefs haven't shown any signs of improvement on defense. Like, I, I haven't seen anything in which I'm like, all right, you know, they're getting better. It's just a slight progression. And it's it's not like it's going to get that much better later. I mean, I, I mean, maybe even Traverius Ward comes back because Mike Hughes was that bad today. Maybe, I mean, I'm not saying Frank Clark when he comes back because Frank Clark isn't going to do anything, guys. That's just kind of the harsh reality of the situation and where we're at right now. But I, I can't see this defense getting that much better. And it's just like, this is the 2018 Chiefs team, and it is playing out. And I was thinking about this. I, I might have said this in my uh, post-game video. The 2018 Chiefs defense did one thing exceptionally well that this defense does not do, and that's get to the quarterback. That was a season yeah. in which D. Ford had a great year. Uh, Chris Jones, I think, had a record-breaking year for him. We don't have that anymore. Like, we don't have the ability to get after the quarterback. Now, I get it in 18, the linebackers were soft and the um, secondary was horrible. But what's so much different about this defense than that defense? You can't get to the quarterback. Your linebackers are not very good right now. I mean, I think that, you know, give them some time, but they don't have enough depth there. And the secondary, I thought was a strong point, and I thought that that was okay. No, outside of Tyron Matthew, they don't have anybody. I mean, I guess Legereus Sneed, but yeah. you know, Mike Hughes got burned. I think DeAndre Baker's good, but he's rotational. It's just like they don't have the dogs that we thought that they did, and that's that's disappointing. Yeah, this is the 2018 Chiefs, but with not as good, not as good of an offense. Now, I say that cautiously because I think the ceiling of this offense with the offensive line talent and Josh Gordon, who's supposedly coming in later is really high, but the 2018 chiefs offense is the best offense we've seen uh, in, in chiefs history statistically. And uh, you know, there's cause for concern here with the defense. Cause like you said, Michael, they can't rush the passer. This was an Eagles team that, was missing four of five starting offensive linemen. Four or five. They were in the exact same situation the Chiefs were in in the Super Bowl, yet our defensive line was neutralized. How come when Patrick Mahomes is missing four of his five starters, he gets absolutely demolished by the opposing teams, and then when it's the other way around, we can't even touch Jalen Hurts? That's pathetic. I just I, I, I can't say I expect anything more because I honestly was going into this game, even with the offensive line injuries, I was saying – you know what? I don't expect the Chiefs to get pressure. I really don't. I mean, they're, they're just they're, they look soft. They're not getting any push up front. Um, I saw there was one play in particular in one of the Eagles' rushing touchdowns where Tershawn Wharton and I think Derek Nadi was out there, and they got absolutely blown off the ball. I mean, it was pathetic. It really was. They can't rush the passer. Their linebackers 
they just don't have the athleticism or, their sp- or the speed. The Eagles were killing the Chiefs in the flats all day. They were using the sideline to their advantage, and they were just torching us on uh, on the sideline with those little dump offs. Um, they had pretty good blocking upfield. Uh, and we were missing a bunch of tackles, the secondary. And I said this for the longest time. I thought they should have upgraded third safety. I thought they should have addressed corner, uh, not addressing corners, finally catching up to them. And again, I'll say it. Um, why is it that Mike Hughes, who was a bust for the Vikings? I mean, this is a guy the Vikings were going to cut if the Chiefs didn't trade for him. And the Chiefs said, hey, we'll give you a sixth round pick. And then they made Mike Hughes a starter for them. Why? He's not good. I mean, he's gotten owned. Every game he's played in to this point, he's not good. I mean, he got absolutely demolished by Devontae Smith today. Mike Hughes is not good. Why is he playing so much? Same thing with Dan Sorensen. Why is he playing so much? And you saw it when Juan Thornhill hit the field. He made a tackle, and that's something that Dan Sorensen can't do. But, you know, I think that what really kind of gets to me is these Chiefs fans are like, oh, we won. Like, don't don't even, like, bother with the last – possession of the game where the Eagles scored a touchdown and all that kind of stuff. But what bothers me is I feel like maybe I'm just wrong. There was a lot of uh, confusion a couple times where the Eagles were in the red zone in which they themselves could have gone forward and got it, but there was a, uh, they penalized themselves or someone jumped off sides or, or something like that. And so they had to settle for a field goal or they just didn't convert into a touchdown. I think if you play a Good off, like a good offense, like the Buffalo Bills. If you play the Buffalo Bills, do you think they're getting they're demolished? Not, you think they're not going to convert? That's what I'm trying to say, guys. They're going to convert, and this game would have been what 35 to 42. And that's why I, I tweeted this out. They cannot afford with the defense they have to play conservative football in the second half. You've got to blow teams out of the water because the defense, the margin for error in the NFL is so small. And when your defense has basically no usage whatsoever, there's really not even a point in having your defense out there when the team is just going to march up and down the field. When you have that going for you, you have to score every single drive. And if you don't, you've got to at least try to every single drive. And I feel like Andy Reid's just like, oh, we're going to run the ball. We're going to milk the clock. Nah, you need to score in like very quickly every single drive. That's just kind of how I feel, but... What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think the pressure of that uh, with the offense of having to score almost every single time is kind of affecting their performance, too. I said this to Connor in my post game on my channel, but uh, he pointed out that Mahomes already has four interceptions this year. He only had six last year. He already has more than half that through the first four games of the season. And he's been pretty poor with ball security so far. There's no denying that. He's found some pretty ugly picks, but I feel like part of the reason he's doing that is because he feels like he has to score every single time or else this team is screwed that he forces passes that he typically wouldn't. Yeah. I mean, and honestly, like you saw it with the five touchdowns today, he, he just needs to make plays. And and I think that he even knows that, like you said, this defense isn't good guys. And I don't know how much better they're going to get. I mean, 25, maybe 20. I I mean, I don't, I don't even, I mean, at this point I would be happy if this defense was 20, because that means that you could probably um, get to a Super Bowl with a 20 ranked defense, but not with the 32nd overall defense. That's just not going to happen. And I think that the people that are kind of ignoring that don't really get that the defense is ultimately what makes or breaks the team. Like, look at it. If we had a good defense in 2018, we're winning a Super Bowl. We didn't have one. And this year, it just seems like this defense is so horribly bad that they're just not going to be good enough to get the job done. I, I just, I had that feeling. And unfortunately, all this offseason talk of, oh, they got everybody they need. Uh, it looked like it was a deep Chiefs team, but I guess not. I, I don't know what to say. I tried telling everyone this, and I tweeted this out too. Like, I I was the one screaming all offseason that, hey, guys, look, there's a hole here and there's a hole there, and 
this Chiefs team isn't that good. They didn't improve that much. And everyone said, I'm a complainer. I'm a whiner. I don't know what I'm talking about. I want all pros at every position. No, I just want competent NFL players at each position. And we just don't have that on defense right now. Um, I mean, we're trying to make death guys starters, and it's just not working. Like Alex Okafor, again, looked horrible today. Like, why is that guy starting? And Mike Dana is a fine piece, but he's this team's best defensive end right now. And Chris Jones, they, again, I mean, they, they need to stop the experiment of trying him out at defensive end because he was the second best defensive tackle in all of football, and they moved him out to defensive end, and he's not even a top 20 defensive end. I mean, he's he's been completely neutralized. And it's because he had to drop weight to play a position in which he never really played before. And it hasn't worked. And I think that the sooner that they realize, oh, shoot, maybe he's not a good defensive end. Maybe he's not. Maybe he doesn't have the skills to translate to be an elite edge uh, edge rusher like he is a interior guy. And I think that the sooner they realize that, the better. But, you know, and I think that's almost the most frustrating thing. I feel like the Chiefs have the talent. They're just making horrible personnel decisions. Why yeah. is Juan Thornhill not playing? What? Why? I, I do not understand why Juan Thornhill is riding the bench when you see him on the field. He's making plays. I mean, I, I don't get it. And, and it's just like if you played guys in the role in which they thrive in, we wouldn't be having this problem. I mean, I I, I will concede that we need more cornerback depth. Uh, or even a guy that could be solid number one. I think that, unfortunately, Traverius Ward is our number two corner, and missing him is a big deal. But I think isn't Rashad Fenton still under uh, concussion protocol? Yeah. Okay. I mean, they're they're missing a few guys, but like, I just I can't see this team getting that significantly better over the course of the next few weeks. I just can't see it. And I hope that we don't get absolutely destroyed by the Buffalo Bills. It could happen. It very easily could happen. Well, the Buffalo Bills today proved that they can put away a mediocre opponent. We didn't. Yeah. And, and we made the Eagles look much better than they were. And I think that's another thing that is just so incredibly frustrating. Guys, the Eagles... How many games did the Eagles win last year? Like four or five, maybe? I got to check that. Um, I think they had the seventh pick in the draft. Um, <laughs> let's find it. I well, while you're doing went, that. Wait, they went, ni they went nine and seven. Wait, no, that's 2019. Never mind. Uh, well, while you're finding that. Sorry, really quickly. They went 4-11. 4-11-1. Okay. and 11. <laughs> Four, 11 and one. Oh, my gosh. Um, And, like, Brad Coley, like, he meant he, – he has a comment down there. It says, the Chiefs win and you're still complaining. OMG. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I mean, look at this defense. <laughs> Do you think that's a Super Bowl caliber of defense for a team that we consider a Super Bowl contender? Why wouldn't you be upset? This was a team that the Chiefs should not have struggled with. These The Eagles, again – one of the five worst teams in all of football and the chiefs were in a dog fight with them until late fourth quarter. Why wouldn't I complain about that? And it's just like, guys, it, it's not going to get better. Like if it was like, if there was like reason to believe that the chiefs defense was struggling because of injuries or, or something along the lines of that, and they're going to get better over time. Fine. I'll take the lumps in the beginning of the season. But the problem is, you have a situation in which your personnel is not very good and your defensive scheme is not getting through to the players, which that that's a whole separate conversation. I mean, we might have to be on. The, I, I heard you talk about it earlier. Spags might have to go. I, I don't think he'd get fired mid season because we don't have anybody else to replace him, but we could clearly get somebody better well, in the off season. And it's not only that, but you said it before. You saw how long they kept sutting around. They're not getting yeah. rid of Spags. No. But to me, he doesn't look like the guy at all. Like you said it, the team struggles to line up. Still, we are in week four, and they don't know where to be. They're not aligned. Eagles, they ran up-tempo on them today because they know the Chiefs can't get lined up. And it's sad. 
Like that's yeah. on the defensive coordinator. And like you said, with some of the personnel decisions, it's obvious we can all see it. Why is it the people who actually coach the chiefs can't see it? I feel like they do. And I feel like Andy Reed is just being stubborn. Andy Reed. And he's like, no, we're going to see maybe it's bags. Who's being stubborn. Um, but I, I feel like there, I mean, clearly there isn't anything more to Juan Thornhill's situation other than he didn't beat out Dan Sorensen, in which case, I don't know, maybe we're watching different football players, but I, I think he has, and I don't think it's very close. Yeah. And I think that, you know, we mentioned it earlier, the Chiefs over the course of the Mahomes era, or really even over the course of the Andy Reid era, have thrived at putting players in a position to succeed, and it makes the team overall better. Dan Sorensen, when put as the starting safety on this team, even going back to the past, has never worked out. That is the reason why he is the number three safety on this team. And that is why you drafted Juan Thornhill, because Dan Sorensen's not that guy. And I feel like we're just too ignorant to the fact that that didn't work out before. I mean, I don't I don't get it. Like, there's so many of those decisions that could be made and... I feel like this front office is just going to roll with it. And I, I can't see Spags going anywhere. I, I think that Andy Reid's going to want to keep him around. And, you know, it might not be a problem with Spags. It might be the fact that you just didn't give him anything to work with, which falls at Brett Veach. I don't know. But I will tell you that this defense is one of the worst in the league, and that should be everyone's concern right now. I don't really care. Win or lose this game, it doesn't change the fact that this team is in trouble. And, you know, this is a perfect way to kind of respond to Brad's comments. Imagine that you are going down a mountain, right? And you get down the mountain and you're safe, right? You think you're safe because you just were able to get down it. But then you look up and there's an avalanche. The Chiefs just got down the mountain, but the avalanche <laughs> is up top. The Bills are the avalanche. The Titans, who did lose to the Jets today, they're the avalanche. You're going to play teams that are significantly better than the Philadelphia Eagles. And what are you going to do then? I, I, I can't see them winning. I mean, so like I said, they won the small victory, but are they going to be able to do it when it really matters against teams that are really, really good? I don't know. It's really sad because I don't, I don't like why did the front office just feel okay with this roster coming into the year? Like <laughs> people, I mean, I even talked myself into it for like two minutes, but who thought this defensive line was deep? Who thought that this secondary was deep? Who thought this group of linebackers was good enough? I mean, I understand Willie Gay is hurt and they don't have everybody right now, but Willie Gay, it doesn't fix everything. And to be quite frank, uh, Frank, with everybody, um, I mean, Willie Gay hasn't proven anything in the league yet. I don't know why people are so confident that he fixes a bunch of problems. Like, yeah, he has all the athletic ability and potential in the world, but that doesn't necessarily mean that Willie Gay is going to be a great NFL linebacker. We've seen flashes of it, but we haven't seen you know, him put it all together yet. And it's just sad because, like I said, I mean, the linebackers, they don't have the speed to get to where they need to be. Um, they look like they don't know where to be still. Um, there's no gap discipline. You can't tell me Jamie Collins wouldn't help this team. Uh, he might be able to kill two birds with one stone, too, because he can rush the passer a little bit Just when he line lines up, up as a line of rusher, scrimmage. For God's sakes. He might be our best edge. I wouldn't be surprised. He'd be better than Alex Okafor. He'd be probably more consistent than Mike Dana. He'd at least be getting home and applying pressure. He might not sack him, but he's going to put a hand in someone's face. Like, and honestly, you asked, how could anyone believe that this team was deep? You know, I'm I'm asking that same question to myself because coming into the season, I thought this was one of the deepest Chiefs teams that we've seen. And I feel like it's because you had you had the defensive last year and you had the offensive last year. You completely upgraded on the offensive line, which I still will hold um firm on that. That the offensive line did upgrade significantly. But the problem yeah. is the defense. You know, I thought that Jerron Reed was a very big addition. I think that Mike Hughes is a good guy to have. You just, you got to play him in his role. And he's not a starter. It's just, 
not really what he's good at. You can't have him in that role. And I think that, you know, they, they upgraded at certain positions, but I think that overall they just kind of didn't upgrade, I, I guess, enough from last season. You know, I guess technically they did upgrade, but when the defense wasn't very good last year, uh, your upgrades don't really mean anything. And I know that they're significantly worse this year than they were last year. But, you know, maybe it's the problem with the overall defense last year because they weren't very good. And, and maybe they thought that, oh, we don't have to really do that much in terms of change because we still made it to the Super Bowl with the team that we had. And so just adding the bare minimum of players was going to help because you really only lost Bashad Breland, realistically. I mean, yeah, that's the only – I mean – and yeah, I, I can't think of anybody else besides Bashad Breland that you lost. And so I think that the front office kind of, I mean, there's that, hey, Damian Wilson, but which I would love to have Damian Wilson right now. Yeah. I was watching that Bengals yep. game on Thursday night. Give me Von Bell trade, whatever to get Von Bell. I would love to have um, the Bengals defense right now. We would be elite. I, it all goes back to Vich's, uh drafting and uh, just his roster moves from the very beginning. Uh, Jesse Bates, that was someone that he uh, drafted Breland Speaks over. Fred Warner, probably one of the best linebackers in the league. He drafted Breland Speaks over him. Um, yeah. You know, There's just so many moves that he could have made. And I know it's easy to say that in hindsight, but I mean, look at this entire 2018 class. Bust. Also, Derek Nadi, we kind of talk about him. Like he's one of the only good players. Derek Nottie's been terrible this year. No one's really talking about that. Derek Nottie has not been good this year so far. Yeah. I've been seeing him get blown off the ball a couple times as well. Um, not not great. And the run defense just hasn't been there. Um, he might still be hurt. I don't know. But uh, Colin Saunders, we don't talk enough about how that was a top 100 pick. Like, yeah. And oh I mean, he's, he's a fourth string defensive tackle. That's what he is. He's a fourth string defensive tackle and you spent the top 100 pick on him. And he's a fifth string defensive tackle. If Chris Jones is still a full-time DT, he probably he's probably an inactive at that point. I mean, look at Colin Saunders. <laughs> it, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, he's missed at significant positions and all that kind of stuff. And, and I feel like his drafts have definitely gotten better recently. Um, but, you know, it's just like they haven't – it's almost like they haven't taken the right guy. And I might even talk about this in another video later. Like, if he doesn't get defense, when that is clearly the bigger issue over the offense, because they just brought in Josh Gordon. I wonder if Patrick Mahomes says, hey, go get Josh Gordon. I wouldn't have been surprised. But I, th someone has got to say, hey, Brett, we kind of need some defense right now. And like you said, you're telling me Jamie Collins wouldn't do anything. You're telling me you could not trade um, for, oh, I can't remember who it was. Um, but there's a ton of defensive guys on bad teams you could trade for. A and looking back at his history, what is the point of drafting if you're not going to do it right? Go out and get the best players, not draft some mediocre ones like you could definitely get guys that would bolster this lineup um and i think that this team is in in need of like a big mike pinnell signing someone that could come in and be a producer um when they need it the most and he did that and where is he right now why don't we have him back i was just about to say that i think mike pinnell is still available uh, let me check where mike pinnell is i mean clearly we could use him um but, you know, that's not even the big – I mean, Mike Pinnell was not going to get to the quarterback. He's 30 years old, and he is – oh, well, he's on the Falcons. Oh, damn, he was – That's unfortunate. Um, I think he's on the practice squad, though, so. Well, maybe we'll be able to sign him off their practice squad. There's just really so many to. other guys. It doesn't even have to be Mike Pinnell. There's so many other guys you could go get. Um, Gino yeah. Atkins, I suggested yeah. that today. Just try. That's all I ask is just try because there's got to be someone that can apply more pressure than Alex Okafor. And I would love to have Taco Charlton over Alex Okafor right now. I've been on that train ever since we cut him. Like, it's just, 
this team has made some very, very questionable coaching and personnel decisions recently. And it it's like, it's thrown us for a loop because like, I'm not going to lie. I was one of those people that's like, oh, Brett Veach has been unbelievable. Like, I can't believe what he was doing. And I think that's because the team was winning 14 to 15 games, went to back-to-back Super Bowls, uh, have hosted three AFC championship games. But, you know, as time goes on and some of the moves that he's made, it's kind of led to the cracks in the armor being formed. Like they don't have depth at positions in which they probably should have depth. If you didn't give a hundred million dollars to Frank Clark, it's just like one. And that's going to have to change this offseason. We're going to have to see. And I don't really want to get into that now because a lot of people were going to say that we're overreacting and that you could say that, but I think that, like I said earlier, you got to look at how this team has performed and the teams. I mean, four weeks. Against. That's already that's already a quarter of the season, yeah. and the defense is league worst. So I don't see how that's an overreaction at all. I mean, we just allowed three hundred and fifty nine passing yards to J- Jalen Hurts and the Philadelphia Eagles. That's pathetic. I mean, the Cowboys yeah. handled this Eagles team better than we did. Uh, I mean. Uh, it's not an overreaction, especially when people know that this defense has been unimpressive for the past few years. They've done just enough for the Chiefs to win a Super Bowl in 2019 and make it back to one in 2020, but they've never been overly impressive. And now they're just really bad. And I saw a tweet, and I said this on my post game show. I saw a tweet from Ken Swanson at KC Sports Network, and it said, uh, the Chiefs might need to um, overhaul their defense like they did the offensive line this past off season. And I'm like, well, they literally just did that two years ago when they overhauled the entire defense. So if they're, if they're admitting that they have to do that again, then I don't think Brett V should be the GM for, I think he needs to be let go because here's the thing, this defense that's out there right now is Brett Veach's product. He's the one that put this together. And you're telling me after two years, he already has to overhaul it again. That just shows that he wasn't the right guy to fix it the first time. And it's just like, guys, Orlando Brown Jr. is going to want a contract. Tyron Matthews is going to want a contract. We don't have this money. Like, what? Where is it going to come from? And and those are just two players. Like, I I think that you know, and my mentality over the past couple of seasons has been throw money at defense in free. Just get defense. I don't care about your offense. Your offense is going to be good because you have Patrick Mahomes. And some of the guys that you have, you've got that under contract. You need to throw money at defense, but you know, they threw money at defense and they have the worst defensive line in football after spending 15% or no, it's 25% 25. of their cap. They threw money at the defense and it hasn't even worked. That's the problem. Like, I, I don't even know where to go up from here. Like they need defense that that's what they need. And I think that it's very clear now, but we're going to have to see how this team adjusts. Cause you know, maybe, maybe they have a, maybe they have a point in time later this season where they get the defensive scheme. It's starting to click and maybe just even knowing the scheme makes them a top 20 defense. I'm saying like 20, like I'm not saying top 15. I'm saying like you're 20. I think if you're 20, you could work with 20. I think we could work with 20. We can't work with 32. That you, you can't do it. That that is that is something that they can't you, win a Super Bowl if they still stay in the bottom five. They just they can't. They can't. No. You're asking the off the, all the offense to do way too much. This team with the 2018 offense and the worst defense in the league couldn't make it past the AFC Championship game in 2018. Although I think if that game is played 10 times, KC maybe wins five of them and the Patriots win five of them. I think it could have went either way. The reality is they lost in the AFC championship. I don't yeah. think that this team with a bottom five defense can win a Super Bowl as it stands. Because you know what they did in 2018, they never underestimated their opponent. They blew teams out of the water, like just destroyed them. They haven't done that. Yeah. In a very Yeah, long the broadcast time. mentioned it today. They haven't won a game by more than two scores since week eight of last year, which was the Jets game in which they won thirty five to nine. 
You know how many mediocre opponents we've played in that time span that we should have absolutely demolished and we won on a last second Mahomes getting a first down to ice the game? And that's defense. And I didn't really realize that until recently that it's always been the defense. I thought the defense was all right. It's, it's good enough. Do we know what the defense ranked last year? Like where they came in ranked? I would be very interested to see. It was like 17th or 18th, I believe. Something somewhere around there. I could be wrong, though. Oh, man. Well, I'll tell you what. The defense wasn't great in the Super Bowl. <laughs> uh <No. laughs> That's one of the things that goes untalked about in uh it's kind of in the shadows of the offensive line and how they performed, but the defense was still awful in that game and the second biggest reason that they lost. Yeah. And wow. Well, let's check uh let's go back to 2020. Um uh, well, the bill whoa 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 whoa. What does that say this year? The Bills have the best defense in the league. According to ESPN, um, wow. I mean, it's early. Uh, we currently have the 31th ranked defense behind or in front of only Seattle. Good God. Um, we are worse than Washington. Everyone else besides Seattle, I don't even know why I'm going down the list. But um, in 2019, we... Where would we rank? Um, yeah, we we're seventeen. We we're seventeen. Yep. That you know how ecstatic I would be if we could get back to seventeen. Oh, I mean, I think this team would be good enough to win the Super Bowl <laughs> if you got to seventeen. That's a lot of spots to jump, though. Like that's a lot of spots to jump, and unless they make up some ground miraculously i don't know if it's gonna happen like realistically i just don't know um I, I i'm at a loss for words i i don't really know what else to talk about um guys get your comments and if you have any questions we'll get to those thank um, god for patrick mahomes and tyreek hill otherwise this team would not have won yeah <laughs> tyreek Hill is the best wide receiver in the game of football it's it, that's yep. just it, it is what it is like he has been extremely dominant over the course of the last couple of years, obviously, but specifically the past two years. Like, where does he rank in terms of receiving yards this year? He's got to be towards the top. Yeah, um, he had the game against the Ravens where he only had about 30 yards, but he's done relatively well in the other games. Um, a lot of yards that, you know, are it, he's had – He's had two games this year, the Browns game and today's game, where, I mean, that's the amount of receiving yards you would expect him to have in, like, two games, but that those only came in one game. It's crazy. Yeah. But um, also, I'm excited for Josh Gordon even more because no other receiver or no other receiver on this Chiefs team had more than 30 yards today, including Travis Kelsey, if you want to throw him in there. None of them had over 30 yards. And I know they didn't really need any of those guys because of how well Tyree Hill played, but... Um, it makes me more excited for Josh Gordon because I think it shows the lack of re reliability and all their other pass catching options that aren't Kelsey and aren't Hill. Um, I think Matt Verderam tweeted it that uh, no Chiefs or uh, I'm sorry, McCole Hardman and Demarcus Robinson did not receive a target that was um, beyond the line of scrimmage. Like McCole Hardman seems to be their designated screenplay sweep guy. Like they don't even treat him like a receiver anymore. And for I mean, all of the people that yeah. hoped for a McCall Hardman breakout year, I mean, he has like 70 yards through four games. He's a glorified DeAnthony Thomas. That's what he is. Yeah. And honestly, like power to the Chiefs for figuring that out because that can be his role. And if and if he thrives there, great. Uh, Village Boy, I have not seen your rant. I'll check it out later. Um Will we be at the top of the AFC West at all? I do think we're going to get back there. I, I do. I think they're going to clean it up enough. I don't know if they'll win the division, get back to the top, because the Broncos are going to get exposed, being real. Yeah. Um, 
I still think they can win the division and be atop the AFC West, but I think the road to getting there is a lot harder than people. Like, I, I, I get really frustrated when I see tweets on my timeline that are Chiefs fans making fun of Raiders or Chargers or Broncos fans for thinking they have a chance because I don't think it's as easy as people think the, to get to the back uh, or back on top of the AFC West. Like, I genuinely think that these teams are competitive now and the Chiefs got to watch their back. There's no more messing around. Yeah. I, I mean, the teams have just gotten so, so significantly better. Like, it, I do think they're going to get back there, but they might not win it. We don't know. Uh, I think that that's going to be very dependent on the rest of the divisional games. If you go five and one out of the next five divisional games, you're great. But that's a lot to ask at this point. You just barely beat the Eagles. So we're going to have to wait and see. Um, do you guys think the offensive line was good? I think out of Luke Niang, they've been fantastic, uh, at least of late. Yeah, uh, I was disappointed in Yang. I was almost ready to see Rimmers at right tackle after how uh, much he was getting worked. Um, I've not been overly impressed with him. He's been really good in run blocking, though. Yeah. Pass protection, yeah. not so much. I think we got – I'm not ready to give up on Niang, though. I think he'll be solid. Um, I would probably rather have Niang out there than uh, Rimmers because Niang's the future. And if there's going to be some growing pains, I'd rather have Niang out there. Um, yeah. Because let, let's be honest, the upgrade, even if there is an upgrade, Remmers over Niang is not that much of a difference, if there's any difference at all. Um, let's see. Uh, do you think we should cut Hardman? No. Uh, I think we should cut Robinson. <laughs> uh, but Yeah. And Sorensen. Cut Sorensen. God, he's so bad. He's completely fallen off a cliff. He has uh, Darcy Jones should go back to defensive tackle to help out the run. Uh, Jones. And I, I agree. I think yeah. if you had Jerron Reed and Chris Jones in the middle, I do think that, that would do something, but I, I Jerron Reed is not the force that people sold him to be to justify moving Jones at, at the edge. Cause now you have, cause before you had interior push with Jones. Now with Jones at edge, you have no interior push and you have no pass rush from the edge. An, an overall travesty. Yeah. And besides that, it, Chris Jones gets lost in space. He's a big dude that isn't as quick as a defensive end, it, just being real. So it's just like trying to get him to do that. It's difficult. And it's shown at times that, hey, he's not really a good edge. I mean, against Lamar Jackson, he got, I mean, I guess anyone against Lamar Jackson is going to get cooked. But there was a lot of instances in which I feel like he played a play to play poorly because he was out of position. And it's just because he's not used to being a defensive end. Um, let's see. Yeah, I agree. I think offensive right tackle is the biggest problem. No, 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 no. Um, defense is the biggest problem. I assume you're not excluding the defense. I think he might just be saying just for the offense. Cause I think, I think he would know that the defense is the biggest problem, but yeah. as far as the offense goes, sure. If you want to point out a weakness, then yeah. Even then the wide receiver too is there. bigger. Yeah. But I mean, they have Josh Gordon now, obviously we haven't seen him yet, but like they've addressed it. So like, it's, I mean, if you want to be technical with it, then yes. But um, yeah. Watch Josh Gordon get like 150 yards next week. Just go off. I hope so, man. I'm excited for him. I'm one of those people, like I said, that is like higher on him than most, and I'm buy I'm buying into the hype because I feel like he still has that ability. But um, yeah, I mean, he he couldn't hit on the field sooner. Uh, I noticed uh, Village Boy said Spags is bad, and uh, yeah, again, I want I want to emphasize that I am so. I I'm ready to jump on the fire spag strand, man, because it is it's bad. And I watched um, and I'm a Mizzou football fan. We have one of the worst defenses in the nation right now. I cannot tell you how maddening it is when both of your teams that you cheer for have such horrible defenses. And I see a lot of similarities in both their coordinators. And uh, that's not a good thing. 
Yeah, N- not good at all. Um, really quickly, Mitchell Schwartz is not coming out of retirement, guys. Uh, he's lost too much weight, and I think he's enjoying. Well, to be time clear, he never. To be clear, he never officially retired. He could come back at any point if he wanted to, but I don't think he's he's in football shape anymore. Oh, he yeah, to you put mentioned on it. so he, much weight. Yeah, he did lose a lot of weight. Um, who was y'all's player of the day? Mine was Saunders. Uh, it's got to be Tyree Kill, right? Tyree Kill or Mahomes? Yeah, I'm not really sure. I mean, not to bag on his uh, player, but I don't really know how you could say it was Saunders. I mean, I didn't, he didn't really stand out to me in any aspect. If you're going to pick a defensive lineman, I'd say it's Dana. I think Dana yeah, played the best of all the defensive sacks. linemen today. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think it's Tyree Kill. Absolutely. Well, you could go with Mahomes too. Besides the one pick, he was pretty fantastic today. Five, yeah, touchdown five touchdowns is pretty cool. Um, let's see. Uh, what's up with D Baker? I don't know. I mean, did he really get beat that much today? That I I don't remember that if he did. He was not as bad as Mike Hughes. Yeah, Mike Hughes has had a rough day. Very. Rough. I didn't notice DeAndre Baker like getting burnt in coverage very often. I'm sure if I went back and watched, he had a few lapses in coverage, but he looks like one of their better tacklers. He also uh, had almost an interception today, hit the ground, but yeah, uh, I don't know. I mean, it was good that he was somewhere around the football because Mike Hughes wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. The Chargers could barely beat us while we turned the ball over four times. How how could you think that they're better than us? I never said that. Um, I didn't say that either. I just said that the division isn't as much of a cakewalk as people said before. I mean, I'm, so, to be to be fair, the Chargers have played significantly better football than we have in the first four weeks of the season. But okay, yeah. I mean, and look, if the Chiefs don't turn over the ball four times, yeah, I think they beat the Chargers. But uh, it was another back reason, to the Avalanche guys, yeah, they, I mean, they win the game, but yeah, and the defense was still not. I mean, they had like two good drives in that game, and then they started to fall apart again. And you you've seen it. Uh, with the Chargers and multiple other teams now. When it's 4th and 5, 4th and 6, teams are still going for it. They have zero respect for the Chiefs' defense, and they shouldn't. Um, And that has a lot to do with it as well. I mean, the defense is just awful, and teams are going for it on 4th down against the Chiefs more than ever. I mean, more teams in the NFL statistically are learning that it's worth it for them to go on 4th down, not just against the Chiefs. But, I mean, they're... I'm sure if someone made a chart, you would see there's a spike in fourth down attempts uh, when they play the Chiefs. Do you hear like a background noise? Some dude decided to start a lawnmower. Like, <laughs> I don't know if that's an issue. I hope it's not. Um, I didn't hear it, so you're good. okay. Well, then we're we're good. Um, it kind of. I thought something in my basement was breaking. Um, but no. Uh, um, will Willie Gay play on Sunday? I don't think he will. In seeing him in practice this week, he literally had. I think he he suited up, but he didn't have pads. He put his jersey on, didn't have pads on, didn't have cleats on, didn't have a helmet. I don't think he's going to play this week. I don't know where you stand on that, but I, I can't see him playing. I feel like this was his ease him back into playing or practicing again week, and then maybe he has a good chance to play in this next game. But, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't play either. He might not be ready yet. Um, but here's the thing. They're going to need him. So, I mean, to me, this next week's game is a must win game. It's oh, a must yeah. win. They got to prove they, they got to prove they can beat a good team. They've got to show they're still top of the AFC and they cannot have a defensive por- performance like they had against the Eagles, against the bills, or else they're going to get destroyed. And you're looking at a two and three football team five weeks into the year. And I don't think anyone would have seen that coming before. Um, they and need really get. If you want to win the division, you've got to win this game. Like, you can't. Like right now, you're starting to build your lead back up. I don't know what the score is on the Broncos game. I'm assuming that they're losing, um, because they were not playing very good the last time that I checked. But you're going to have to win this game because you know you beat the Browns in Week One, the top team in the AFC, in my opinion. 
this is the this is the next step. If you beat the Bills um, significantly, or or you uh, are able to at least win, if you can squeak out a win, great, because this game is very very important. It could also decide home field advantage throughout the playoffs. I mean, we're gonna have to wait and see, but it's it, this is an important game, and we're gonna have to. Uh, um, see this defense improve because if they don't, it's going to be a long game. It's a Sunday night football game, and we've seen some some very bad Sunday night football games from the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, yes. Do you all think something's going on in the locker room, or is it just lapse in judgment? I don't think anything is going on in the locker room. I just think that they don't know what to do. <laughs> like I, defensively, at least offensively. I, I don't know, but defensively, I just don't think they know what to do. Yeah, they, they don't know where to line up, and I think a lot of it is coaching. Yeah, and <clears throat> that will have to be addressed in a separate video because I could talk about that for hours. Um, Broncos lost to the Ravens. All right, so that means that you know maybe by next week, depending on who the Broncos play, you could creep out of last place. Uh, it's just you got to find a way to dig yourself out of that hole. That's that's the goal right now. Um, you know, Josh, we're, we're yeah. about 45 minutes in. Do um, you have anything else in closing to talk about? You know, I, I don't really want to talk about this game anymore. I, I get it that they won, but, like, it's just – it's the same old, same old. Yeah, it's the same stuff we've been saying for basically the past three weeks now. Um, their defense has got to get better or else they're not beating anybody good. I mean, I, I agree. I mean, other other than the Eagles, I mean, you can't really afford to play. I mean, you can't even really afford to play subpar against the Eagles because they almost won today. I mean, there was a point in time where they were driving, and it's just like, oh, my gosh, can they not stop them? But, yeah, we're just got to wait and see. Uh, the Bills have the best defense in the game, according to ESPN, through four weeks of the season. So we might be in for some trouble next week. I hope not, but uh, – with that being said, guys, I think I'm going to end this live stream. If you haven't already, uh, go follow the show on Twitter. That's at KC Sports Report and Instagram's KC underscore Sports Report. Uh, hit the like button on this live stream. Subscribe to KC Sports Report. And uh, Josh, where can the people find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at ShowMeFB, or you can follow my personal at JoshFan43. And then you can subscribe to me on YouTube by simply searching Josh Fan. Yeah, guys, go do that. And, uh, I'll, I'll see you probably either tomorrow or Tuesday with a, a video addressing something about this defense. But until then, guys, enjoy the rest of your Sunday night and go Chiefs.